says that we are live. Hello. We're here with uh, Russell Mays, the Director of Content for Jatai, and in par partnership with, uh, of course, Marlowe Beauty Supply. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for coming by. Can uh, everybody hear us here? Please let us know. I have a lot of people joining in. Hello. The mannequin has gold hair. <laughs> Where is everybody from? From Chicago. Well, welcome, Chicago. All right. I'll just give us a couple minutes here before we get started. Um, from Detroit. Ooh. Yeah, all over the place. New Jersey, Texas, Florida, wow. another Detroit, wow. Houston, another Detroit, Florida, Michigan, all over the place. Awesome. My first roommate in New York City was from Detroit. And he would always correct me and say it's Detroit, not Detroit. <laughs> yeah, okay, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Uh, North Carolina, Long Island, Birmingham. Oh, wow. Wow. Now I'm getting nervous. <laughs> Nebraska. I saw an Oklahoma in there somewhere too. Just a minute. Whenever we minute. feel like we got enough people in, we'll we'll get rolling here. Okay. So, how many watched the, the last razor class that I did? Was there a lot of people that watched that, or, or is everyone new here? Yeah. If if anybody here has watched Russell do uh, what was it the shag right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I'm all about those seventies here. So we're going to do nothing but 70s, forever. Okay. Well, we're a few minutes past five, okay. so, so let's get started here. Might as well. So welcome, uh, you know, for coming by and checking us out. These things always make me a little nervous because, you know, on video you can pause it, but these you can't pause it, and if you mess up, you, you mess up. So I'm hoping that this goes well. Uh, today we're going to be doing a one of my favorite kind of 70s rocker type of haircuts and uh, I worked with a guy back in Kentucky where I'm originally from who was brilliant at this haircut and that's who I learned it from but I want to give you some uh, pictures of what the inspiration of the look is going to be so we're going for let me see if you can see that with that reflection Patty Smith you know kind of um, Stevie Nicks Whoever this dude is, I need a cigarette. Mick Jagger, of course. Uh, Van Halen. You know, these types of heavy bangs. You know, a lot of layering. But the thing that you'll notice most about it is it's, it's very short on top, but it's not really wide. A lot of times when we layer hair really, really short, it tends to get these really round, wide shapes. And all of these are long and narrow. So that's what we're gonna focus on. Oops, that's what we're gonna focus on today. So there's a very specific way that we're gonna go through and layer it that we call step layering. And that will give us a lot of height and shortness on top and take out a lot of that length, but leave us all this length here without giving us this bubbly shape. So, I mean, when we think about the 70s, there's, there's the glam disco, which is very round. And then there was the rocker, which was very, you know, narrow and vertical. So that's what we're going to go for today. So to start, I'm going to take a natural or center part, wherever the doll head likes to separate. I'm going to go through there. Let me lower her a little bit. Right back to the crown, from the crown straight to the center of the spine. If I can find it, I think I might be, oh, that's not bad. Straight back to the center. 
Now, if I don't explain something concisely enough to where it really, uh, you will really understand, just let me know and I'll, I'll try to be more on top of that. So we have a, a class of love here and there's no dumb questions other than the questions you don't ask. So feel free to ask away. Go through and pin that up out of the way. Now here, I'm gonna start in the back. I'm gonna use my feather razor and I put a new blade on it. I like to change a blade whenever it starts to push the hair. Whenever I feel any resistance and it starts pushing, that's when it's time to change the blade. So I'm gonna start right here in the middle. And the way that I determine the width of this section is where the comb lays flat against the head. So I wanna keep this flat vertically and flat horizontally so that I'm not cutting across any curves of the head and changing the angle of my cut line. So I'll comb as clean as I can get, comb down through, once I get to the bottom, I'll place the blade and very gently just up and down until all of that hair disappears. And then you end up with a line like that. I wanna try to keep the same razor stroke with every section. The more consistent that I can do, the better. Now, one thing you're gonna notice is I'm pushing the head down forward and then I'm gonna comb the hair straight down towards the floor. So when I go through and cut this, what is gonna end up happening is I'm going to be cutting the sides here shorter than the center. So I want this to kind of be a beveled shape. I don't want straight across or inverted, I'm trying to bevel it. So an easy way for me to do that is to make sure the head is tilted at a certain angle, combing the hair straight down towards the floor makes it easier for me to repeat on both sides. If I leave a few little strands, you just go through and clean them up. But I'm not trying to be super like neurotic and make sure everything is absolutely perfect. I wanna get it in the same ballpark and that seems good enough. Oops, there we go. Remember to ask your questions. We will uh, answer those at the end. So um, I see some questions coming in. That's great. And uh, oh, that's right. We're doing them all at the end. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> totally ask out. the questions. I'll scroll I'm back down out. and look for them. All right. So now the next section. If I lay the comb against the head, you'll see one flat, and I have two flat. So I have two flat sections that's gonna to go to the top of the ear. Pin that up out of the way. If the hair is really thick, I'll separate this in half. If it's not, I'll just go ahead and take the whole thing. And for time's sake, we'll take the whole thing. Comb down. Now, when I'm combing this, it's important that I get consistent tension. So I'll hold the comb two fingers on one side, two fingers or a thumb and finger on the other side, and then I'll rotate. So as I go towards the parting, the comb is facing away from me so I can comb everything really clean at the scalp without pulling the hair out. If I go like this, I start to pull all this hair out of my parting. So if I go backwards, flip the comb, that's the only tension that I create once I get down to the bottom, I grip for dear life. Cut that straight across. Same thing, keep the head tilted. Comb everything straight down to the floor. Now I'm going to cut this very, very flat. You know, very, very flat. So the blade of the razor is laying flat against the section. I'm not cutting like this. 
where I'm introducing movement. I'm combing everything flat and cutting that as blunt across as possible. I want to keep this line fairly solid, but the texture I want to be soft. I could certainly open up my razor to uh, give more softness to it if I wanted to. Now we'll take the rest of everything here, comb down, have the head up. Now remember in beauty school, when you were doing finger waves and you had to really evenly distribute all the hair off of the parting in order to start your finger wave, that's the exact same thing that I'm doing right here. So I have an even distribution of all the hair so that now when I comb it down, it's perfectly evenly distributed and I don't have to worry about the hair living outside of where it's not supposed to. It's gonna fall in its natural fall. Cut everything straight across, following my guide underneath, getting a little shorter towards the front, beveling that shape. Now right here, the front's already a little short. It's hard for me to get a grip on, so I'll just cut on the inside of my fingers. Like that. Tends to be a little more blunt than if, when I cut on the back side of my fingers, but it will still give me the shape that I want. And for those who have just joined, uh, Russell, can you see what we're doing again? Uh, I am doing a rocker 70s kind of what was it? what would you call it stevie nicks van halen kind of haircut with uh, some heavy bangs very very short layering on top keeping the length very long and as we start to go you'll see that develop so now after i've gotten all of my length i just check the lengths see how it looks say okay the left side's a little shorter than the right side but no, that's, that's actually not too bad. So that's good enough for me. So now let's move on to the bangs. Now when I cut the bangs, normally what I'll do is go to the center of the recession and the first bump of the head where the head starts to curve forward. That's gonna be all my bang. On the mannequin head, since I tend to get kind of a funky hairline over here, I'm gonna go a little wider, right to the point of the, of the recession. It's gonna give me a little bit more fill in right through there. Now you have to just fit it to your client's head. Maybe they got a lot of hair and they don't need as much. Maybe they got too little hair and they need more. So look at it, see how it fits, and add and subtract accordingly. Now look at that and say, you know what? I'm gonna put that back over here. See how that looks. I think I'm gonna take a little nibble of that out. Come on, baby, don't fight me. All right, so now I'll separate this into a more manageable section. Pin that out of the way. Now, as I cut here, I know that this is very, very springy at the, at the, at the scalp here, and it's inconsistent. And you get all of these kind of like cowlicks that stick up. So I'm gonna leave it a little longer than I want. So the goal that I'm going for is going to be right at the bottom of the eyes, the bottom eyelid. So I'm gonna leave it probably a little longer, just not quite to the tip of the nose, a little shorter, knowing that it's gonna spring up a little bit and I'm holding it down. The further down that I hold it, the more weight that I'm gonna introduce. The shorter that my razor stroke is, the more weight that I'm gonna introduce as well. 
So now we'll look at that and we'll say, okay, that's not too bad, not too bad. I'm not worried about it being perfect. We're just worrying about it being around the general length that we want. There's my length there. We're going straight across. Trying to fight the urge to make it longer towards the edges. Cut that. And I'll fight that urge by combing it straight down in its natural fall as opposed to pulling it forward where I cut the last piece. There's my fingers, there's the length, grip, death grip. Hope that this ends up being fairly even. Nope, that side's shorter. <laughs> we'll just pop that down. We'll fill that in here. We'll fill that in with the next section. Comb that down here. Cut that down and through. When you're doing rock and roll, rock and roll is not about perfection, it's about a feeling. And that's the excuse I'm gonna tell her when she says her bangs are too short. Go through here, cut that a little longer to mask where I cut it a little shorter. That's not bad. Looks like my, my bangs when I had hair back in third grade. Perfect. All right, so now from here, I'm gonna go through and separate right at the high point of the head and go straight to the high point of the ear. So I'm going where it's, it measures out high, straight down, a little bit behind the ear, but I don't want to go too far back. This is going to be all my layering around the face. So let's go to the other side. Same thing, straight up and down, just right at the back of the ear. Pin that hair out of the way. Make sure the hair has an even amount of wetness to it. The reason I wanna keep that evenly wet is the razor will cut inconsistently on different wetnesses of hair. So I wanna keep everything as even as possible so I don't fray one part and cut the other part real smooth. Now I'm gonna pull this straight forward. Now if this part is, it's uncomfortable for me to cut. And I say that because I'm going against the grain of what I would normally do. I would normally not go through and start my layering this short, especially as I start to work in towards the side where I'm pulling this completely straight forward and cutting this straight up and down. My spidey sense is going off saying, oh no, you're cutting it too short. But I'm telling you, you gotta go through and trust the shape that you're cutting and cut this straight up and down by pulling it forward. Pull everything forward, straight up and down. A little bit of razor so I have some texture through it. I'm gonna take a little bit of the weight out right through there. It seems this doll head has a lot of weight right in that area. So I've pulled that forward. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Pull this forward. My fingers are parallel and even with my parting. There's my length. Get the razor going. Nice and even, as even as possible. Pull this forward. There's my length. Straight up and down. I start losing a little. Clean that up a bit, but I'm not trying to get it real clean. 
I have to get out of my Sassoon mindset that this is gonna be a real precision haircut. It's not about being precision and precise. It's about getting the lengths and the texture right. Now here, I'm going to pin this completely out of the way. I'm not gonna to touch this until maybe I texturize it. Now I'm gonna cut the back. The back, I'm gonna start right in the center of the head. And I'm gonna take a triangular section. So this is the crown right on top of the head. And I'm gonna pull this forward and I'm going to cut it uncomfortably short. It is uncomfortable for me to cut it as short as I'm about to cut it. But that's the look that the 70s had. So I'm gonna go probably, let's say about right there. Now, first thing you're gonna think is, oh Lord, how am I gonna blend that to this long hair and not lose all the length? Well, that's the secret. I'm gonna separate this right down the middle. Come on, get that out of the way. Pin that out of the way. Now, my first section was this this triangular section. I'm gonna add about three quarter of an inch, half inch, depending upon the thickness of the hair. And I'm gonna comb this straight up into the previous section, which was right there. And now I'm gonna go a little bit past it. So I'm gonna try to, there's my guide. So I'm gonna try to go one finger length past what I cut. So now if I cross check this, you're gonna see two distinct lengths. I got this length here and I got the length there. So I got my first step and my second step. I'll remove the first step. Get that out of the way, come on baby. Go to the third step and I'm just gonna keep stepping this all the way until I run out of hair. There's my guide. I'm gonna go a little bit past it Now you're gonna think that when I do this, I'm gonna have lumpy layers, but I'm not going to because what's happening is not only am I holding this at maximum elevation for the section, which is straight up from the parting, I'm also not cutting it that much shorter than the previously cut guide, right? I'm not cutting it that much longer, just a little bit longer. And then the razor gives me that softness. So as I continue to go down the head, I can go from really, really short to really, really long. That's how some of these guys in the 70s had hair that was extravagantly long, but was still super short on the top. Cut that out of the way. Remove section four. Now I've got five and six. Now usually if I've stepped right, about at the mastoid, I should be running out of hair. And this is just, well, I'm running out of hair now. And that's okay. So now from here, in a very, very short amount of head space, I have gone from really short to really long. And as I start to shake that and look at it, you don't see any steppiness of the layers, but you still see all these short layers that pop out and separate, but still leave this long solid hair underneath. So now from here, I'm going to completely pin this hair out of the way. I'm not going to use it as a guide. I'm not gonna do anything like that. I'm gonna use this as my guide for this side. So this is very much a free form sort of shape. So when I start cutting hair, all right, there's two schools of thought, and that is the very, very structured, you know, very methodical, uh, just precise partings, precisely cut straight lines, you know, type of method, the Sassoon type of method, this whole, um, very, very structured, engineered type of haircut. And then there's the, the French method that I call it, which is very much visual. I look at the shape, see what it needs, and then just cut it, just completely freeform. 
So to be really great at cutting hair, I have to master both crafts. I cannot just be full sassoon. I cannot just be full free form. Well, I shouldn't say you can't. You can, but you're, you're not gonna be reaching your highest potential. So you have to be able to visualize and cut and structuralize and cut and balance the two. And that's what this haircut is, is we're balancing the two. There's my guy from underneath. Get that out of the way so I can see. Now, if there's gonna be any discrepancies in lengths between one side and the other, it's gonna be very, very minute. And I think that that sort of difference between the left and the right only adds to the, the overall look and feeling of it. I'm not trying to make this a real precise haircut. I mean, it's kind of ridiculous to make it precise when I'm step layering it and then cutting it with a razor and going from four inches at the crown to you know, a foot of hair in the back. So don't try to make it precise. Think about the feeling and the feeling that we're gonna get is all gonna be from the texture and the differences in length. And of course, how they dress and how they style. And you can style this any number of ways from very grungy to very glamor and everywhere in between. Now that should be it. Look there, nothing going on there. Now let's shake and bake and see what we got. Now, I, I think that's looked pretty good. I think that's looking pretty good. We got nice, short here, elongated in our layering, but we still have all this length underneath. Now let's pull everything out of the front. It's looking very Def Leopard. You guys, if you have any questions, please write them in the comments and Russell will answer them at the end. But it's looking really good. Not bad, not bad. Now I am gonna take a little more weight out of this area right through here on each side. Not necessarily the bangs. I like the bangs kind of heavy and solid, but I feel like there's a little too much weight right in through there. It's a little too solid, especially when I'm comparing it to the back. So if I shake and I look at that, I kind of squint my eyes a little bit. So then when I shake and look, I want to see what sticks out. And to me, this sticks out heavier than it does back here. Now granted it's longer, right? But I'm not worried about it being longer. I just want to take some of that weight out. All right, let's take that. Now the way I'm going to take it out is I'm gonna fillet it, I'm not going to channel it. Channeling would be like this, where I'm gonna create separation. I just wanna lay my razor flat against the head and just with the tip, just kinda of fillet some of that weight out. So I remove the weight without changing my shape. And that is not gonna get a whole lot right through there, perfect. Yeah, I like that better. Do a little bit on this side here, Stevie Ray Vaughan. There are so many guys that had this, so many girls, guys. Hart had this haircut. All these people had this haircut. It was so popular. It was the, the Jennifer Aniston of their day, <laughs> or the shag of their day. I guess it was the original shag, huh? All right. Not a whole lot through there. There we go. Now let's shake and bake. See how we got. The good thing about these doll heads is you can just do that. I wish <laughs> I could do that with my client. You know, go, ah, here we go. Now we still got a nice fill in on the sides, and that's part of the the scary factor when I'm pulling all this hair forward and I'm cutting my corner off here at the ear, I'm thinking, oh no, it's gonna like gap. But because I'm layering this top so much, this just fills in and it opens up this hair around the face and puts the emphasis right here behind the ear 
instead of in front of the ear. And that's a signature of that shape as it was always shifted behind the ear as opposed to in front of it. There we go, looking there. Now from here, go through, diffuse it. If you've got this kind of natural, you know, Rod Stewart kind of texture, you could do this. Um, you could blow it smooth, flat iron it, you can curling iron it, you can do a lot of different things. The more polished that it is, the more glamorous that it becomes, the more lived in, like I have been on tour for six months, I haven't done anything to it, the more grungy and rocker it tends to be. So I diffused our pre-done, and let me get that one. <laughs> Here is our pre-done, our finished result. So if we look at that, lower that, raise that up. We got really short layering up here on top, diffused all the way down. And if you look at the shape of it, it's very vertical and not bubbly, but there's no steps to it. Even if this was blown out smooth, it's not gonna be stepping. We got solid bangs. I did better on the bangs this time than the last one here. Don't worry, girl, that will grow, that will grow. <laughs> but same shape, same sort of texture. And so I hope that you like that. That was a, that was a fun one. That was a fun one. So what kind of questions do we have now? That we're about a half hour. All right. We've got about 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, let's see. Um, so is this similar to what they are calling the wolf cut? I have not even heard of a wolf cut, so. Yeah, I haven't heard maybe. of that one I don't, either. I don't know. I've not heard of a wolf cut. Um, I have to research that. <laughs> uh, let me see. And what's the ideal texture hair? Um, the ideal texture would be probably a lot of hair, not like Chewbacca, but a lot of hair helps because it, uh, it gives it that fullness naturally and you can really go to town razoring it and texturing it. You gotta watch out though because not every hair is friendly to a razor. I'd say there's probably 10 or 15% that doesn't do well with the razor, especially if the razor's dull and the hair is not completely wet. So that's the first thing whenever you're gonna do a razor cut. Sharp razor, sharp blade. If I feel any resistance at all when I'm cutting, new blade. Because I know if the more that I have to physically push the blade against the hair, the more the cuticle's gonna fray. I wanna keep the hair completely saturated, wet, but not sopping, so I can't see what I'm doing. That sets it up to be the best opportunity for you to do a good razor cut on it. Um, fine hair does okay, but if you layer it this short on fine hair, it tends to get a little really, really flat. And then you have to axle rose it where you hairspray it to an inch of its life to where it sticks up like a porcupine. And uh, that's really not today's style. So I would say everything but ultra fine hair. If it's got wave or curl, I think that that's fine too. You gotta watch out on real curly hair because it could really elongate the shape and you gotta match the face. If they have a long face and you elongate the hair, it's, it's gonna look kind of poodly, if that makes sense at all, which is not cute. <laughs> Unless that's what you're going for, then it's awesome. <laughs> all right. um, do you specialize at your salon with mostly razor cuts? No, I probably do 60-40 razor cuts to scissor cuts, maybe 35% razor cuts and 65% scissor cuts. So I use it when it needs it, and it's gonna be based upon what's the texture we're going for, how much weight removal do I need to remove, how much separation do I need to get to it, and um, how they style their hair. So it's, it's not a cure-all for everything, but it is a tool that you really need to learn how to use and add it to your, you know, your repertoire, because there are some haircuts that demand it, and then there's some that don't, if that makes sense. All right, what do you use to prep the hair? Uh, I use Jatai Blade Glide, which is kind of a leave-in conditioner you know, cutting lotion. It just constricts the cuticle and makes it slide through easier. It makes any kind of scissor work, or especially razor work, makes the blade just slide through a lot easier. So that's what I usually prep it with. Okay. Um... 
I don't see any other questions here. Okay. Let me just scroll all the way back down to the bottom and okay. <laughs> see if we got any last minute questions here. Okay, here we go. Um, any tips on cutting upwards when you elevate the hair? Yes. All right, so when I'm cutting upwards, say that, don't spray your face. Hold the hair. I'm gonna hold palm down and I want my elbow up out of the way and then when I take my razor, I turn my hand over. So my el both my elbows kind of go up and out and out of the way. So then when I go and I get the motion rolling, it's easy for me to start to work forward. So it it's this motion, you know, especially with this hand, of rolling like that. And I tend to hold my blade backwards. So I'll put my finger in the loop but the blade is facing away from my fingers. So then when I roll over, it rolls back down. So it's easy for me to unroll and rotate my wrist. So now the blade is going up and I'm just using my elbow to make the stroke as opposed to my wrist. The elbow is easier when you're first getting started. So you yeah, know, rolling everything up and up. Elbows away from the bottom. Okay. Oh, it looks like, um... The spot salon for hair said wolf is just another name for the shag. Okay, so this is, yeah. the shag is can be similar to this. Um, a shag tends to be uh, a little longer in the crown. You know, it can be shorter, but, and it's mostly longer bangs where it's, it's whispering out like this. This is heavy and then also much extremer Extreme. Is that a word? I just made up. More word. extreme. <laughs> it's 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 a lot different in the extremity of the length. You know, it's a lot shorter to longer. So, a little, it's similar, but it's not completely the same. Okay. Do you recommend to use oil spray for razor cuts? Um, oil spray, such as like a Moroccan oil type of thing. I mean, it's okay. It's okay. I, I worry that sometimes the oil can be a little heavy. If the hair tends to be a little lighter or finer, it could be a little heavy. Some hair can definitely get away with it and I think it would be fine. But I like a, an emulsion, which is oil and water emulsified. And that's why it tends to be like a, a white cream. It tends to lighten it up. So. Um, do you prep the hair with anything other than water before razor cutting? Just the blade dry. I, I shampoo, condition, usually use a conditioner that has a lot of slip to it as opposed to something that's more um, re restorative so not a lot of protein in the conditioner something that's more smoothing and, and more slippery and then hit hit it with the, the blade glide before I raise your cut okay yeah. um, do you recommend a trim every four weeks for maintenance no I would go as long as you possibly can stand it before you get a haircut because I mean from from two from two thoughts, uh, two points of view, two schools of thought. First thought is every haircut I do, no matter how much I practice it, there's going to be some times where I hit it out of the park and the bangs are perfect. And then there's other times where I cut it, well this is not the perfect one, the bangs are perfect and sometimes the bangs are rising. So I, as much as I practice, I can't do the same haircut every time. So when you get a good haircut, you have it as long as you can because even though I'm gonna go back and cut it, it's never gonna be the same. There's always gonna be subtle differences to it. And though I try to aspire to the same level, sometimes it's better, sometimes it's a little worse. And so I want my client to go until they can't stand it anymore. Sometimes that's four weeks if their hair grows quick. Sometimes it's two months. And so I want them to go as long as they can. The other thought is that I need enough hair to cut off to make a difference. Because especially with the razor, if she comes back in and I only have a half an inch to cut off, that's gonna be very, very difficult with the razor. I could go through you know, and do this sort of thing, but now I end up with a blunter cut line than if I was to do this sort of motion. you know. So it's not gonna be the same. So 
I, I tend to go a little longer as long as they can stand. I hope that answers your question. Okay. Um, do you recommend switching from razor to scissors on alternating haircuts like every other time? Um, yeah, that's okay. I, I've done that before. Like sometimes if I'm trying to clean it up, I'll go through and point cut it with a scissor and then thinning scissor it so I can get a similar texture to it until I get a little bit more length to cut on. Um, I think sometimes bluntening the shape up with a thinning scissor and a razor as opposed to a razor every time gives it a little bit more structure and uh, you can get too heavy handed with the razor, but uh, the scissor you can get not heavy handed enough with the thinning scissor. So it's, it's a balancing act. So I, I don't mind that at all. I, I have been known to do that. Okay. Who's your inspiration or whom you admire in the hair industry? Who I admire? There's a guy named Kazu Inoue in Japan for a company called Hair Fiber Zoom that I absolutely love his work. Um, I like a guy named Dove Palmer. He's old school Sassoon and is the best that I've seen. He is brilliant. Uh, Angelo Seminar, very, very creative and uh, has done some things that, that literally just blow my mind. And so those are some, some key ones that I have. Okay. Do you recommend to use a razor for curly hair? Yes or no. Minimal razor if the hair cuticle can handle it. A lot of curly hair, the cuticle is very, very sensitive and can fray very easily. So there have been times I have used a razor on curly hair, but it's very, very minimally and very delicately mostly on the ends. If I'm gonna do curly hair, it's gonna be mostly on the ends. I'm not doing a lot of internal channeling and things like that, because it can really start to explode the hair. So I'm not saying you can't, but you just have to do it with, with care and understanding and sensitivity. Okay. And I would tend to use uh, a guardless razor, like the feather plie, as opposed to a guarded razor. The guarded razor, I cannot be as precise as I can with the with the guardless razor, so I would I would do that. Okay. Do you prefer to cut and dry hair or wet hair uh, with razor and scissors? Scissor, I can do either or. Uh, I have, I cut clients' hair dry before they go get color and things like that all the time, uh, but I will always use a scissor and thinning scissor. Razor, I want the hair to be wet. I definitely want the hair to be wet because it frays the cuticle less and it gives me a lot more control, and the razor slides and glides through the hair much easier. So yes, wet hair, definitely with a razor. Wet and dry with scissors, yes. Okay. Does the brand of razor make a difference? Is one better than another? Uh, the blade makes a difference, you know, and even though I, I'm sponsored by Jatai and, you know, Feather Razor, I really find their blades consistently, you know, sharp across the board. I haven't had, I've tried other brands before, you know, the ones where you slide it and you get two uses out of it, but I find that their blades are inconsistently sharp. And so if I'm gonna take a new blade and I find that it's not as sharp as the last one, it just irritates me. And then I go through another blade and another blade because I'm very persnickety. I'm very precise about my tools. I have my scissors sharpened every three or four months. Uh, I like sharp stuff. I don't want the scissor to take my attention away from the haircut that I'm doing, right? I want to be able to focus on this and focus on my conversation with the client and not focus on, oh yeah, that's dull. And that irritates me. So I always want to use sharp stuff. So I'm inconsistent, you know, blades and sharpness that irritates me. So I'm like, no, I just use feather and I'm sponsored. So I get them cheaper. <laughs> um, who's your favorite razor cutter? Um, my favorite razor cutter is uh, Howard McLaren and uh, Douglas McCoy. So Howard is uh, one of the, I, in my mind, he is the originator of taking a razor and applying Sassoon methodology to it. And uh, Douglas is kind of like his protege and does beautiful work. I think Douglas's work is prettier and more glamorous and Howard's tends to be far edgier, but those are my two favorites. Um, this will be the last question. Yeah. Uh, no, what, <laughs> what technique do you use to cut curly hair? Um, technique, it's not so much a technique as much as it is 
a methodology with cutting curly hair. All right, so if I'm gonna cut someone with, with naturally curly hair, when I'm layering it, my layering has to be very, very, very precise when I'm layering it because if I cut across any curved parts of the head, I will have two inconsistent elevations. So let's, let's look at the doll head, how it curves over here. If I take this section right here, right, I've got one flat section and another flat section. So I've basically got two flat sections and two angles to get 90 degrees. If I hold everything straight up, this is not 90 because that would be 90. This is not 90 because that would be 90 there. So I'm holding it up here and cutting it. So now I have two different elevations. This is gonna be elevated more than this. So the top is gonna be heavier than the underneath and it creates a lump. So you have to elevate everything at exactly the same elevation all the way around the head or you're gonna end up with lumpy hair. So it's not necessarily uh, a technique, you know, like, like the, you know, sliding or something. That slide cutting is taking out all the weight. And so you have no weight, you just have length. It's like old school roller set haircuts where everything is length and then I tease it into shape. If I'm gonna cut a structured shape, I have to make sure every section is elevated at exactly the same elevation. So I have an even amount of weight distribution. If I don't have an even amount of weight distribution, I end up with lumps and lumpy hair is what gives curly hair a problem. Okay, right. any last minute remarks? Thank you so much for coming, I really appreciate it. I apologize that uh, Instagram went down on Monday and we're not doing our normal routine. And uh, you know, I really appreciate you coming out and all the comments and, and watching and being engaging and it, it really, it really makes me happy. Thank you so yeah. much. And uh, where can we get the feather razor and Marlo Beauty has the feather razors and and, and blade glide yes yes they have both of them through there uh, find it through Marlo Beauty and thanks Marlo Beauty for having me again thanks for having us Yay. thank you thank you all right bye bye, -bye.